Hello, today we're going to talk about envelopes. We will be looking at what they are, how to shape them to our needs, and some concrete applications. Let's take a quick peek at what's to come. The usual disclaimer applies, all the modules I'm going to use today are modules that I bought with my own money, I haven't been paid by anyone or anything like that, it's just modules that I personally like using. I'll show with a few modules what you can expect from an envelope generator, so you can know what to be looking for when you're choosing one for yourself. Now, back to envelopes. Simply put, an envelope is a sequence of voltage levels that is used as a modulation source. Envelopes are commonly split into segments named Attack, Decay, Sustain and Release, also known as ADSR envelopes. These segments can be shaped in a variety of ways to achieve different effects. Let's look at this on a scope. So here we have, coming from off-screen gates in red, just from a keyboard, going into PipSwap, which is an envelope generator, and the envelope coming out of the envelope generator are displayed in blue. Now if I trigger gates, we can see the envelope with very short attack and very short decay as well. Can increase those timings. Can increase the attack as well. Now I can also change the shape. So it can go to linear, for example. or all the way to exponential. Now, I can add a third stage to that envelope by, instead of using the trigger input, using the gate input. What that will do is add a sustain stage, which will remain ongoing as long as the gate is high. So for example, I'll set very short attack and decays. And what happens is that the blue trace is basically the exact same one as the red one. But if I increase the attack and decay again a bit more then we see the envelope following the three stages but also remaining high for as long as I keep the gate high. If um, the attack stage takes longer than what the gate is on this envelope generator stops the attack stage and immediately starts to decay, but some other envelope generators will have different behaviors. Some might um, finish the attack stage and immediately go on to the decay, bypassing the sustain entirely, for example. Very much depends on the envelope generator. Let's move on to another envelope generator. So here we have tilt instead of pip swap, otherwise it's the exact same patch. Now if I trigger it, we can see pretty much the same behavior, but we gain a couple of controls on that one. First one is an amplitude level, so we can change the amplitude of the envelope, which is quite nice if you want to modulate your destination a little bit or a little bit less or a little bit more. And in this case, we can also go into negative, which is quite nice. The other thing that we gain is a control on the sustain level. So if I press that for now because the sustain is at maximum, it, it's as high as it can go. But if I lower it, what happens is that we get the attack stage and then a decay stage and then sustain and then release. So we can see attack, decay, sustain, release. And finally, here's a very complex envelope generator quite mega slope, otherwise exact same patch once again. The way it works is there are five different stages that can be configured entirely in terms of amplitude level, time, which is the duration or slope going from logarithmic to exponential through linear, 
And then we can select which of the five stages is going to be the sustain stage. Anything before that is going to be chained as an attack stage, then a sustain, and then anything after that is going to be chained as a release stage. If I trigger it, I have different stages that we can see. And everything can be CV controlled except for the slope for each stage. So we know how to shape an envelope, but how do we trigger it? Besides the obvious choice of a keyboard or a sequencer, we can also use an NFO or a clock or pretty much anything. That's the fun of modular. But notably, we can also use other envelopes as trigger sources. So here we have something a little bit different. Let's go back to pip slope. We still have the gate in, in red, the envelope itself in blue, but we're also having a look at the EOS output, which is end of slope, that you will be able to see on data in yellow. This end of slope output is a trigger that's emitted when the envelope reaches the end of its cycle. Now, because it's really short on data, it also will trigger a drum that we'll be able to hear. Now, this EOS for end of slope output is commonly called EOC on other envelope generators for end of cycle here on the Quake Mega Slope, for example. But there's also an EOS output for end of stage. So what that means is at the end of every single of those five stages, we'll get a trigger here. Let's have a look and a listen. So we've talked about shaping envelopes and triggering them. Now let's talk about what we can actually do with them. Envelopes are commonly used to modulate a variety of targets, such as VCAs and VCFs. Paired with those, they are the foundational building blocks to shape a sound into a note by modulating the amplitude of the sound over time or opening the filter. So here we have a very basic voice, pulse wave going through a low pass filter, through a VCA, and the output of the VCA is what you'll be able to hear in a minute. We still have the gates coming from the keyboard off screen in red, and then to a quite mega slope, triggering an envelope in blue, and from there, triggering the VCA. Now, if I start this, you can hear a sound with a very, very quick attack. So it, it kind of is like a percussive sound. But if I increase the attack time, it's much slower to ramp up. And so it loses that percussiveness aspect. And that's what envelopes are all about modulating through different shapes, a sound or something else. Speaking of something else, let's take the modulation from the VCA and modulate the filter cutoff frequency instead. And let's see what it sounds like. With a short attack again. Now, a traditional synth voice will have modulation both on the VCA and on the filter. It might be the same envelope, it might be two different envelopes triggered by the same gate with different shapes, different slopes, but having that combination adds a bit more complexity to the sound. But we can modulate other things with an envelope. After all, it's just CV. Let's look at some more creative but useful ways of applying them. So in this patch, we have the exact same voice as before, with just things added. So I multiplied the gate output of the keyboard, still passed to the quite mega slope, but I also triggered the pip slope with it. In yellow, we'll be able to see that envelope from the pip slope, and what it's modulating is the volt per octave of the VCO here. So what that will do is basically add to the pitch of the note of the VCO following the shape of the envelope changing the pitch before it settles in. Let's have a listen. So you can hear how the sound is, the pitch of the sound is higher at the beginning and then settling in following the yellow trace. If I increase the attack, for example, it will have different effects. 
Um, and that's just one example, but we can pretty much modulate anything. So let's modulate the PWM instead. We can hear the effect of the envelope before the sound actually settles in. Another interesting application of envelopes is to use them as complex LFOs. With the ability to shape and time their segments differently, they can create more complex and varied modulation than a standard LFO if we can get them to just loop. So in this part, we just have the output of the envelope going in yellow. That's it. The Quake slope has a dedicated loop mode. So in loop mode, it's going to go through all the stages one after the other and just emit those voltages following those shapes. I can change the shape of the repeating pattern here and just going to repeat it. We can also change the number of stages that are used. We can reduce that. I'll go back to the five that we had. Another nice thing is that it has a plus minus output, so we can have pretty much an LFO just with a different shape going both into positives, positive and negative. It's not the only envelope generator that has a loop mode. So for example, if we have a look at the pip slope here, it has a loop knob. That one doesn't have a plus minus output, it's always going to be positive, and because it only has two stages active in loop mode, it's more simple in terms of kind of shapes that it can create, but it's still an interesting pattern that we can use as some sort of LFO. Envelope can also be generated from sound sources with envelope followers. This is commonly used for sidechain compression or to layer complex sounds. For example, in my video on VCAs, we used an inverted envelope to do sidechain compression. But if we don't have the envelope of a sound readily available, we can use an envelope follower to produce a similar one. Let's have a look at how to do this. So in this part, we have keyboard off screen triggering drums, drum audio, to an envelope follower here, and also through your left audio channel. The envelope generated by the envelope follower is going to be displayed in yellow here. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Now, we can use that envelope through a VCA set to attenuate, so basically inverting the effect of the envelope for a basic voice to have that voice ducking to leave room for the drum sound. Let's have a look. Now, in addition to that, we can also affect the length of the envelope that's generated by the envelope lower. Different envelope followers will have different parameters that you can tweak. That one just has duration and a filter to ignore low frequencies. But depending on what your goal is with that envelope, you might tweak it differently. In conclusion, envelopes are a powerful CV source in synthesis that can help shape the sound and create complex modulations. By understanding how they work and experimenting with their different applications, you can unlock new possibilities for sound design and performance. As always, if you have any questions or comments about what we've covered, or if you have suggestions for other topics you'd like me to explore in future videos, please leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one.